the traffic is not pretty much what Flight 2081, uh, Roger, maintain visual separation, maintain 200. Maintain visual separation, maintain 200 knots, Frontier Flight 2081. Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. And this one we'll have a look at the new GSX Pro remote de-icing feature. Especially with regards to the procedures, how to prepare the aircraft for remote de-icing. A lot of people, including myself, have been waiting for this feature because in real life a lot of airports don't actually allow de-icing and anti-icing at the aircraft stands. And so remote de-icing positions have been put in place, uh, for example here in Munich, where the aircraft will taxi out after engine start and then have the aircraft um, de- and if necessary anti-iced prior to takeoff at a remote stand. Now, if you are doing a remote de-icing procedure, there's a few differences to how we prepare the aircraft, um, especially after engine start, to configure it for the de-icing and anti-icing process. So initially, you will do the normal preparations with the aircraft, as always, um, demonstrating that uh, here in the Phoenix A320, but it's also valid for other aircraft types. Let's have a quick look at the differences when remote de-icing procedures are in force. And so after finishing the pushback and engine start, the aircraft is left in the following state. Now the flaps remain in position zero, and that is in order to prevent damage in case of ice and snow accumulations on the flight controls. Uh, the flight control check is delayed until the icing and anti-icing is completed. And however, the trimmable horizontal stabilizer is set to the required value after engine start with the after start flow. So once uh, you've started the engines, done your after start flows for the icing, you will read the after start checklist and then you taxi out to the de-icing area and once the parking brake is set, you perform the items procedure, um, which I'll show later on here in the video. Um, and that is the ground de-icing and anti-icing checklist. If you want to have a uh, checklist like this, you can uh, find it under blackbox.com. I will show that as well uh, once we reach the uh, de-icing the pad. Then once the aircraft is prepared for de-icing, we'll call the de-icing trucks through the GSX menu. And the fluid type and concentration will depend on the weather conditions. We'll also have a quick talk about that uh, when we reach the uh, de-icing pad. Now, Generally speaking, type 1 is mostly used in frost conditions where there is no precipitation, uh, while type 4 is used uh, when a longer hold of a time is required during a continuous precipitation. When the de-icing procedure and checklist is completed, we'll either extend the flaps for takeoff and do a flight control check, or in case of precipitation like snowfall or taxiway contamination, will delay the flaps extension and the flight control check until we've reached the runway threshold. And that is to avoid contamination of exposed areas, for example, between the flaps, which have not been subjected to anti-icing fluid. Then once the flaps are extended and the flight control check is completed, uh, we'll do the rest of the taxi flows. And once those are completed, we'll read the taxi checklist. And then, same procedure for lineup and departure, there's no changes there. Unless, however, uh, in real life we have been subjecting the engines to icing conditions um, for longer periods of time. It depends on the engine type. Uh, but for the CFM engines, for example, here in the Phoenix, it will be that if the outside air temperature is plus 3 degrees and lower, um, and visible moisture um, is uh, present or the taxiway is being wet or contaminated, we will do a engine run-up of about 70% at intervals not greater than 30 minutes. And I will demonstrate that um, prior to departure here in the video. So at this point we'll assume that we've done all our cockpit preparations, we've uh, done the briefing and we're now just waiting for the loading and boarding to be completed. While that is going on, let's have a quick look at the different 
uh, de-icing, anti-icing fluid types. Uh, there's four of them, type 1, 2, 3, 4. And for airliners, these days normally we are using type 1, 2 and 4. Simply speaking, uh, the fluid types are made of a certain percentage of glycol. On top of that, you'll have uh, some water and inhibitors and a wetting agent. And type 2 and 4 also have a thickener. Type 1 is usually orange in color. It has a fairly short hold over time because of the uh, fact it has no thickener in it and uh, hence has a low viscosity which means uh, it'll flow off the uh, aircraft surfaces at lower air speeds. And so usually type 1 is being used for frost situations and uh, situations where the aircraft um, has to be um, de-iced and uh, gets its surfaces um, cleaned from all the contaminants and uh, the fluid is usually um, also applied in a heated state. If we have a look at the type 1 holdover times, um, uh, be aware that these tables are not uh, current and they are of course only to be used in flight simulation. Um, but you get a general idea that um, the type 1 fluids, uh, depending on the outside air temperature, usually don't have a very long holdover time. So the two times, for example, you can see here um, for the snowfall um, at uh, above zero degrees Celsius, um, it says six to 15 minutes. And so the lower value would be in moderate snowfall conditions and the upper value would be in light conditions. These days uh, we have more sophisticated tables um, with a more sophisticated definition of different uh, precipitation rates. However, since the icing um, doesn't really have an effect on, on the aircraft uh, at the moment in Max Flat Sim, uh, there's no point in, uh, in going through all of that. But who knows, maybe in a future update, um, icing here in Max Flat Sim will have an effect on uh, airframe aerodynamics, and then maybe we'll cover uh, the topic in more detail. Coming back to our example here with the type 1 to 4 fluid types, uh, let's have a look at the type 2. Uh, here it has 50% glycol, 49% uh, water inhibitors and wetting agent, and about 1% thickener. It's usually yellow or transparent in color, and the hold of a time is a little bit longer, and uh, has a high viscosity however is restricted to takeoff speeds higher than 95 knots. Type 4 fluids have even more thickener, 2%. Uh, they're usually green in color and the hold over time is obviously a lot longer and uh, it has a high viscosity and also is restricted to takeoff speeds higher than 95 knots. Let's have a look at an example here with type 4 fluids. Uh, let's say today we have temperatures of minus 4 to minus 14 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have a moderate snowfall. And so a fluid concentration of 100% would give us a protection time of around about 20 minutes. You have to be aware that the holdover time starts the minute the um, anti-icing layer is actually put on the aircraft. So depending on how many vehicles you have available for the anti-icing process and the, how quickly they apply the fluid, even 20 minutes can actually be a fairly short time uh, to get everything finished with the preparations afterwards, uh, taxiing to the takeoff runway and then departing. Okay, so let's have a look at the taxi out routing um, via November and we'll have the de-icing area Delta Alpha 1 close to runway 08 left. And now that all preparations have been completed, a loading, boarding, finished, uh, we're going to call up the GZX menu and uh, prepare for pushback. Now, since we are doing remote de-icing, we'll select uh, no de-icing required uh, when requesting push and start here. Now, GSX will always tell you not to start the engines during uh, pushback when uh, you have icing conditions. Now, that is somewhat overdone. 
Normally, we would delay the engine start if there is contamination on the ramp, i.e. when it's slippery. But otherwise, uh, we would do the uh, normal engine start to push back. However, in these conditions here, we do delay the engine start until we've uh, finished the pushback and the parking brake is set. Set parking brake. So now that the parking brake is set, we'll do a normal engine start. As soon as both engines are started, Parking we'll tell ground. GSX that we have a good engine start. start. And then we'll do the after start flows pretty much as normal, except we will not move the flaps and we will not do the flight control check. However, we do set the trim. That is allowed. And then uh, we can just read the checklist as we would usually do. As per normal ops, we'll wait until we can see the all clear signal. And then, yeah, we'll go through the checklist. So anti eyes, engine anti eyes is on, ECOM status is checked, pitch trim 29% is set, and the rudder trim is neutral after start checklist completed. If you are on an ATC network like VATSIM, IVEO, um, you will be assigned a de-icing area. Here in Munich, for example, it will be done usually by the tower. And um, in our case, we'll pretend that we are getting the icing area one. So now the cool thing is that you can actually select uh, through the GSX menu the de-icing area as you taxi along. All you have to make sure is that you get the right de-icing area and you can request to follow me if you like. Um, I know where it is, so I'm not going to. And then uh, if the de-icing area has been programmed to have a um, docking board, um, you'll get some infos on that board and you'll see that here in a second or two. So we're approaching the icing area one and the um, info board there from GSX has just come alive. We can see our flight number and the, the icing area name. And then it'll tell us to taxi forward and give us a nice countdown until we have to come to a stop. Then we're just going to stop, set the parking brake, and then we will go through our de-icing, anti-icing checklist. You can find the checklist uh, on blackbox 11com under A320 documents and there under checklist. And uh, you have a little uh, checklist there to guide you through the uh, procedure. So it will tell you, for example, before applying the fluid to select or check that the cabin pressure mode selector is in auto. And you'll find that switch on the overhead panel. Just make sure that the manual isn't uh, lit up. Then it's an auto switch off engine one and engine two bleed air. Check the APU bleed is off and then select the ditching push button to on. Now that switch will make sure that all of the vents are closing, the outflow valve closes, and so that uh, no anti-icing fluid can actually get into the aircraft through these vents. Then we'll make sure the thrust levers are idle to avoid jet blast to the uh, de-icing vehicles and the personnel. And then once that's all completed, we'll report that the aircraft is prepared for spraying. The icing vehicles are coming now. So there come the de-icing vehicles. 
and then they will ask us what fluid type we uh, wish to apply. Confirm, aircraft is ready for treatment. So I have selected type 4. Type 4 is always applied at 100% concentration. And then we'll just uh, let the de-icing trucks do their thing and wait patiently until they have finished the uh, de-icing, anti-icing procedure. Now, I hope that GSX uh, will implement a more sophisticated de-icing animation at a later stage uh, so that we can watch them actually uh, de-ice the, uh, the tail section as well. De-icing and anti-icing completed. Anti-icing code is fluid type 4, concentration at 100%. I'm disconnecting. Good day. There you go. So GSX has finished the icing the aircraft, and then what we'll do now is go through our um, ground de-icing, anti-icing checklist, where it says upon completion of the spraying operation. So we kind of reverse the uh, the flows. First of all, we will uh, select the ditching push button to off. We'll check that the outflow valve opens. And that is uh, to prevent the aircraft pressurizing uh, when we switch on the uh, the bleed system again. Once engine one and two bleeds are on, we'll check the ground equipment is clear and that we have received our de-icing anti-icing report. And then normally we will do the rest of the after start flow, i.e. select the flaps and do the flight control check. However, since it is snowing, we will prevent uh, to extend the flaps and uh, do the flight control check until we have reached the runway threshold. And that is in order to avoid any contaminants building up in unprotected areas, so areas that have not been sprayed with uh, anti-icing fluid. Here we are reaching the runway threshold, set the parking brake, we'll extend the flaps and do the flight control check. And once that is completed, we'll go through the taxi flows and then uh, read the taxi checklist. Then we'll wait for the uh, lineup and takeoff clearance and do the rest of the items as normal. In the rear aircraft, we would line up and if we have icing conditions, i.e. temperature below plus three degrees Celsius and visible moisture, uh, so that we have a risk of the fan blades icing up. We will do a engine run-up. We'll have to tell ATC prior to lining up uh, that we are going to take 30 seconds on the runway for an engine run-up. And then what we simply do, we uh, call up the engine page, set 70% N1. We do not set the parking brake um, in this case because the runway is contaminated. And we'll check for the vibration level. And as long as they're, you know, in normal range, anywhere between uh, up to uh, two units is uh, perfectly fine. And once the 30 seconds are over, we'll release the brakes and set takeoff power. On contaminated runways, we always go toga power. And from here on, it's a normal takeoff, normal climb out. So there you have it, the uh, new GSX Pro remote de-icing feature. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you have, please do leave a, a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, uh, I would appreciate you doing so. Uh, more videos coming in the future. It's an exciting time to be in flight simulation. In the top right corner here, you'll see a link to a uh, recording I've made from a Vatsim flight with air traffic control in Munich and uh, where we actually do the uh, de-icing or the remote de-icing procedure.
As always, thank you so much for the awesome support. Take care, everyone, and I'll wish you all happy landings.